waiting down there because they said you got the boat. Wait, oh no, wait, no. Wait, wait, come back. And I am taking a lot of problems sticker because I folded the other one. And I thank Paul for confirming that I don't need to be because this is my first big one. And what do we do? I'm going to do my best to take yes. this election and do my best for this area, for these over. people. And that's all I can do. Um, I wasn't going to hand it over to a Democrat. No! So here I am, and now the bad news Paul just gave that I will sit in a minority in the House. Well, if I win this position, it's, when? Not, it's nothing that I relish doing, but I will do it for the people. And then the next time, we're going to have a candidate, and I'm going to work hard for them to get them elected, because I'm not doing this again if I win. <laughs> so, so anybody, any one of you that wants to be a politician or wants to go to Augusta and represent, I say start planning now and I will help you in any way I can to get you elected. But I don't want to do it again. <laughs> so, oh God. <laughs> that's all. I'm, anybody that wants questions answered or to talk to me at any time, I will make myself available wherever I can. Do you have a sign-up list for people who want, who can help you, or people when you need help? No, but I would love that. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the support. It was a wonderful showing, and I am so happy. Five candidate, Christian Ireland. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I didn't really come prepared for a long speech. I figured the governor was going to speak for a while. Um, I know a lot of you, and it's been really good to, to bump into a lot of people that I haven't seen in a long time. We, we've gone a long time without being able to do events like this, without being able to do Fourth of July parades, and I think... Peggy has proven today we can do this safely, and I, I want to give her, her a big hand. You know, we've, we've done really well today. I see a lot of people with masks, I see a lot of test flags, uh, I love the vote. You know, we, I think we, we really represented what we were trying to do today very well. Again, I'm not a politician. I, my, my story is much like everybody else here. I graduated from Stearns in the mid-90s with one option, and that was to go to school and move away. The, the, the days of... Uh, there being unlimited jobs in the mill and, and prosperity here, they were gone. So I moved away, and the first thing I did was I bought a camp on Golden Arc Lake. <laughs> Said I didn't, I don't know where life is going to take me. I don't know what job, you know, what career path I'm going to be in, but I know where I'm going to retire and squatching grandkids in Golden Arc Lake. Amen. Amen. Now I, I got two little kids back here. I'd like them to be able to uh, have jobs in this community. I'd like to see. I'd like to see funding from Augusta where we can actually have decent schools that we're proud of. Yeah. You know, I was real spoiled going to Stearns and think, you know, that was like, that was like a Division One college. Now you walk through there and the superintendent's the principal and he's driving the school bus and helping in the lunchroom. Let's bring some funding back to these communities. That's about the only fair way to distribute your taxes is to fund your schools and bring your property taxes down. Other than that, Let's bring some common sense back to Augusta. Amen. Yes. You know, it, whoever gave her an unlimited checkbook to spend, 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 the bill is here. It's on the table, and nobody's reaching for the bill. We, we have overspent over a billion dollars compared to what Paul was doing. You know, we, we, he had a slush fund in case of that rainy day fund. Well, if you're not looking, it's raining. 
I wish we had that money right now to take care of some of these businesses, but she'd already spent that. Yep. And we talk about how she won't let legislature go back in Augusta. Well, even if she did, the very first thing they want to do is push through the other half a billion dollars worth of bills that they, they didn't get to. Right. right now, they aren't saying, oh, well, geez, we, we really need to look at cutting spending. And they, they're going to spend, 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 thinking the federal government is going to send them more money. And there is no guarantees, guys. The only guarantee is that, that bill's going to have to be paid, and that's probably going to be in our taxes. Yeah. There are a lot of people out of work, a lot of people transitioning jobs right now. And the last thing we need is a blank checkbook in Augusta. So let's send some common sense down there. Let's... Uh, you know, make it some accountability, let's cut some, some frivolous spending and uh, see if we can, you know, bring some uh, manufacturing jobs back to this area. Because uh, the, the uh, economy we had six months ago with, with President Trump bringing all these jobs back, that's going to be here six months from now. No matter who wins in the election, the economy is going to start booming again. And, and hopefully in this area we're prepared for that. Uh, I, I was on the phone with uh, Puritan Medical a couple days ago. I heard you had some more money. You're looking at expanding. You're looking at a new lab. Now, I, it looks like they're they're going to continue what they're doing in Pittsfield and Guilford. But I'm making phone calls. Yeah, you know, we we got some nice spots. We got one in Lincoln. We've got one in East Monaco. We've got one in Monaco. We've got one in Old Town. We've got one in Pasadumkeg. What's good for Lincoln is good for this area. You know, I remember when I worked at Lincoln Paper, half the people I worked with were from East Millinocket and Millinocket. We can't be so greedy that's going to be in Millinocket, East Millinocket, Medway. What's good for one is good for all. But I, I pledge I want, I want to bring business back here. Um, so if you send me to Augusta, that's, that's why I'm going there. Any one of those microphones right there. It's really helpful if they turn them on and speak into them. Not you know it's on. Okay. This is incredible! Yeah. Give yourselves a big round of applause! This is amazing! I absolutely love it! I actually live in Chester, and I represent District 141, which goes from Lowell, Burlington, all the way out to Denny'sville and Edmonds. So right after this, I'm leaving, and I'm heading out to <coughs> Whiting, two and a half hours away. For meetings, so but I cannot thank Governor LePage enough for making sure that he mentioned voting for Susan Collins. I am going everywhere that I go, I make sure that people understand the situation that our state is facing. I just served my first term in the House of Representatives in Augusta under Sarah Gideon's leadership. Ooh. We had to fight tooth and nail and we lost because of course we are in the minority. Now our tax money is going to pay for abortions. Oh, I don't dude. care which side of the situation that you fall on. If you're pro-choice, pro-life, it doesn't matter. Our tax dollars should not be spent on abortion. And I'm telling you right now, if Sarah Gideon is elected, that is what she will push at the federal level. Yep. We cannot allow that to happen. I know that there are a lot of people that say I can't vote for Senator Collins again. I understand that completely. However, this is not the time to die on that hill. Please, I beg you. Mark that circle one more time for Senator Susan Collins. The state of Maine cannot afford to have Sarah Gideon as our senator. It will be expensive not only monetarily, but morally. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my kids and my grandkids growing up in that type of a Maine. It's no fun being in the minority in the House, or the Senate, or the Legislature. Senator Collins is the key pin for our federal Senate, for the Congressional Senate, Republicans, to maintain their majority. Susan Collins is set to be the chair of the Appropriations Committee. That is huge for the state of Maine. 
She has done amazing things for our friends and neighbors, for our families, for our schools, for our businesses, across the board. Chair of the Appropriations Committee. We need to keep that in mind. That doesn't come by being a first-time senator, a junior senator. That comes from the position that Senator Collins has put herself in, which is to be the voice for you and me in this in Washington, D.C. That is incredible. And she works for us. As a, as a rookie in the legislature, I know how important it is to be able to scale up in the people. When you have an issue, for me to call my state senator, but to also be able to call Susan Collins' office and say, look, they are having a problem. They get the job done. And it doesn't matter who you are. Susan Collins works for the state of Maine. I need each one of you that are here to not only vote for her yourself, but to get at least five other people to make sure that they check that box for Susan Collins. Sarah Gideon works for Sarah Gideon. She does not work for the people of Maine. We need to make sure that Susan Collins gets reelected. I cannot thank you enough for being here today and for showing your support for the Republican Party, showing your support for our nation. Thank you. Thank you so much. You gotta turn it on. Can't speak English. You and Beth are always taking care of me. I didn't come here today expecting to speak. Um, when this whole COVID thing started, the legislature was left out of the process. There's 186 of us. And what did Sarah Gideon do and Troy Jackson do while we was losing upwards now of 300 businesses in the state? She was busy campaigning because if she was to call the legislature back, she would have had to stop campaigning, she would have had to stop fundraising, and that was it in a nutshell. And they've tried twice to get us to come back. The governor could call us back, but that would be a black eye in her mind, you know, on her, her mind. And we said, no, we're going we're gonna to hold the ground. We'll take up financial issues. We'll take up issues related to businesses. We'll take up issues related to unemployment. And that was a, that was a deep battle. Uh, I won't mention any names, but it was, it was a disaster. Uh, I decided not to run for re-election. Uh, I served three terms in the House. And I tell you, Kathy Javner has hit the ground running. Woo! I mean, she is such a breath of fresh air down there. And if you want something done, you ask a lady to do it. And, and, uh, like I said, Jeff Gifford, he, he served four, year, uh, four terms in the House. He's running for the Lincoln, Howland, Enfield in the greater area. Um, and I was just joking with Governor Page. Uh, after Jeff does a term, I think I might run again just so I can serve with uh, Governor Page again. He is such a breath of fresh air. Him and President Trump is cut from the same claw. The businessmen, and I supported President Trump from day one when he came down the escalator because I told my family, we need someone like him to understand the common people. I work area up the road up here after you walk firewood, and I'll put a plug in for my brother. I love getting up in the morning at 4 o'clock and heading off to work and putting it at 10, 12 hours a day because I consider myself not a politician, but I consider myself one of us. We have too many full-time politicians in D.C. The self-serving. I've always been amazed how Congressman Mike Mishuk go down to Augusta, go down to Washington on a meager $180,000 salary and come out with millions. Uh, we have it in our own party. That's how come so many decided not to run in 2018 because President Trump said he was going to drain the swamp. Yep. He didn't have to do it. They'd done it themselves because they was guilty. Just like Congressman Golden, I served with him four years. I told him when they appointed him, voted him in as majority assistant leader in the House, I said, Jared, 
I said, you're a smart young man, you're a veteran, I have my utmost respect, being a veteran myself. But I said, this Democrat party is full of hate, and they're gonna spit you up and chew you up, you know, chew you and spit you out. And now, if he stays down there for 20 years, and comes back a multi, multi-millionaire, how has he done it? How has he done it on $174,000 salary? The reason why you do it, how you do it, President Obama, $700,000 net worth. He just bought and paid for a house in Martha's Vineyard for $12 million. How do you do that being out of office for three, four years? They all do it. But I can tell you right now, like, like Representative Jasmine Jeff, Jeff said, we need to elect Senator Collins. We need to elect Representative Dale Kraft. We need to elect Christian Allen. We need to elect Republicans across the ticket because I have seen so much hate. Mm. And I have a lot of good friends in Washington and these, um, in Augusta. Good, wholesome Democrats. But when them doors close, all the hours of rubber stamp for Speaker yeah. Gideon and a rubber stamp for the Speaker Pelosi. Mm. So the hatred that we're seeing is going to be ramped up tenfold if President Trump gets reelected, which I feel he will. And if Joe Biden gets in, forget it. Our liberties are over. Absolutely. Our liberties are over. Maybe we might not see it up here, but I tell you, it's creeping in slowly. It's creeping in slowly. And by the faith of God and trust in God, it's everything's in his power and everything's in his mindset. So I tell you, vote Republican. Next time, Peggy, tell me I need to speak. <laughs> <laughs> speakers today. Thanks for everybody coming out. We're going to hang out for a while, have hot dogs, play some music, uh, ride around on the boat some more. Everybody stay safe, uh, follow the guidelines, and have a good time.